In Photoshop, sometimes you have an array of similar objects and you want to make one of them stand out. And uh, one great way to do that, of course, is by changing it to a different color. Uh, let's do that with one of these eggs here. We'll choose this egg just off uh, to the right of center. And the tool that we're going to start with is uh, the polygonal lasso tool. First we'll zoom in on the egg. And then the third tool from the top, if you click and hold, second choice, polygonal lasso tool. Okay, now this tool works by defining single points. So let's start here at the union of our egg and another, and we'll create our first point. Now you'll see that once I click, wherever I place the lasso tool, a uh, line follows it. Okay, and what we want to do is have that line follow along as closely as we can manage the edge of the egg. Okay, make another click. Okay, now the tighter the curve, when you're doing curves, uh, the closer together you're going to have to put your points because you are, in fact, drawing a straight line between points. And, uh, you know, of course, you don't want to be going too far. You'd cut out, like, if I go from here all the way over to here, I'm going to be cutting off all of this part of the curve, right? So, you know, judge it with your eye and be as accurate as, uh, accurate as you can and follow along the edge. Now, the Ponygonal Lasso tool is my favorite choice for making selections of all kind. I find it to be the most accurate and flexible and even though there are times when other choices are more appropriate, in general this is the uh, go-to tool for making selections. We come in here, cross over, okay, and of course the rougher the surface, the edge that you're following, the more points you'll have to make. Now when you're making your points, be very careful that you don't uh, double click too quickly, too close together because when you double click like that uh, it thinks that you want to close the shape that you're creating okay and what it will do is it will close off the selection from the point where you double clicked to the point where you started and quite often when that happens accidentally uh, it leaves you in a frustrated mess, your selection is ruined, and you'll likely have to start over again. Now we're following this final edge. Now I sometimes find in Photoshop uh, that the line showing the selection will disappear and in fact sometimes the the lasso icon will disappear or turn into a little crosshair or something and uh, you just have to kind of continue on now you see when I come you may not be able to see because it's so small but when I come to the point where I started a little circle appears in the bottom right hand corner of the uh, tool icon um, or the tool cursor I should really be calling it that means that when you click you're going to be closing that selection so now I click the selection is closed and we can see it in effect there now um, I like to save selections once I've created them just in case so let's go select save selection we'll give it a name we'll call it one egg and we'll click OK now um, I'm going to click on view 
and fit on screen so that I have an overview of the whole picture once again. All right, and um, let's go to image adjustments and click on hue and saturation for example. Now we'll pull the box out to one side of the egg here so that we can see what's going on. Now by creating a selection we're limiting these changes to that selection area. So now when I pull on hue you see how the egg begins to take on different colors throughout the uh, color rainbow that we have available here. Now I kind of like the red. I'm getting into the... yeah, alright. Let, let's choose this red color here. Now we've got the hue that I like. Now let's look at what saturation does for us. Saturation is basically the amount uh, or the intensity, perhaps, is a more correct term of the color. So if we pull that all the way down, we get no color at all. Our red turns to a flat gray. Okay, now if we come up, we get a much more intense red. Okay, now if you want to go too far, uh, then it won't uh, fit nicely within. Uh, the luminosity of the photo as a whole. Okay, But bringing it up a bit uh, is a nice way to emphasize the point. Again with lightness um, you know you again you can go too dark, you can go too light. Typically I don't find this uh, setting as useful as saturation when um, making adjustments of this type. Okay now we can click OK, and we have, uh, if we go to select, deselect, we get a nice view of the change that we've made. Now, um, let me show you something else. Go back a bit in history. Let's a window. Open the history window. Uh, before I go back, I want to make a uh, snapshot of this state that we've gotten to. So just in the upper right hand corner of the history window there's a little tiny down arrow. Click on that and click on new snapshot. Okay, and We're going to call this one red egg. All right, And we'll click OK. Now if we if we just hover over the bottom edge of history here we get the up and down arrow that shows that we can resize. So I'm going to pull this down just to give us that much more room for viewing. All right, and uh, let's go back to the point where I had simply made the selection. Now these double arrows here will shrink our history state back to a more manageable size, and we'll go back into um, image adjustments, hue and saturation. Okay, and you see that we have. A, a colorize selection. All right. Um, now, before we select it, actually, let's cancel that, and we're going to choose a color, uh, a foreground color. All right. Let's click on our foreground color uh, preview here, and this time, uh, let's make it a blue. Okay. So we're going to make. this blue, our foreground color, that's what is going to be picked up by the color eyes. So once again, choose a color from the color palette, go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation, and select color eyes. And you'll see that uh, whatever's within your selection takes on uh, the attributes of the color that you've chosen. All right. So this is a really great way if you know the color that you're aiming for, and perhaps you have the RGB values for it, etc. Um, you can you can affect that without having to fiddle with the hue, etc. And we can still pull up saturation a bit if you like. Click 
click OK, select, deselect, and if we go back to our history, let's make a snapshot of this. Snapshots are a great way to work on variations. Okay, because here we have our original, we have our red, and we have our blue. And then you, of course, uh, easily being able to switch between them uh, gives you a great idea of which one that you want to keep a, as a final. Or, uh, you, of course, you may decide that you have to keep working if the results aren't to your satisfaction. Okay, so um, that's a quick and easy way to colorize one item out of many. All right, and I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, Help Video Guru, on YouTube, and uh, keep up to date with my new videos. Thanks for watching.